Hello, welcome to CGMA, Storyboarding for Animation. Uh, this is Stephen McLeod. Uh, I'd like to just basically state the goals and missions of the course. Uh, this is an introduction course where we will learn some basic techniques for visual storytelling. Uh, I'm going to go over ways, uh, exercises that we can use to generate ideas and, and share with you some tips and tricks that uh, I use in storyboarding um, every day. And a lot of the thoughts and assignments are ones that uh, I had done at one point in time. Uh, and you know all the information I'll cover comes from different notes and from different lectures and and things um, and I've taken some notes from my own uh, working experience and studying and I've tried to I, I've done my best to try and you know separate the tried and true the things that I feel like will uh, you will you you will use often in the in the workplace and also uh, the assignments are meant to help you build a portfolio so hopefully at the end of the course uh, you guys will be able to not only create your own stories but you'll be able to show that in a basic way to others alright now I'm not gonna if I drop some names it's not because I'm trying to impress or anything I just want to give due credit to the people that uh, have kind of influenced me over the the past few years uh, uh, Ken Bruce gave a lecture at CalArts and uh, I'm going to start with some of his notes from 2006. Ken Bruce is a storyboard artist as well. Uh, he talked about story. You know, what is a story? It's an account of imaginary, a real. Uh, it's a creative demonstration of truth. It's life with all the boring stuff cut out. And it's the stuff of life. The joy, the pain, the ups and downs, the lows, the highs. Um, something that someone mentioned one time at work. They were talking about how, hey, you know, if you're going to do a story about somebody you you should pick the the best stuff you know uh, you cut out all the the monotonous stuff the stuff that most people experience and you try to find the stuff that uh, is special unique the things that maybe we don't get to experience in our lifetime but we're able to do it vicariously through other people's lives mind you obviously the the mundane things in life are the things that we share in common but I do think that people will be more engaged in things that they've never experienced but telling it through someone's point of view uh, why do we tell stories uh, some say to learn about ourselves uh, in the book uh, Orson Scott Card wrote characters and viewpoint he's a fiction writer he's a great fiction writer and this book is I, c I can't recommend it enough it's it's really good we're gonna cover a lot of different books I'll try to get you guys a book list but he says uh, by the time they finish your story Readers want to know your characters better than any be human being no ever knows any other human being. That's part of what fiction is for, to give us a better understanding of human nature and human behavior than anyone can ever get in this life. So that's a, a good thing to remember, that these things, it, it helps people get in other people's shoes, I think. Um, to share our common humanity, to shape and inform our morals, politics, and values, and to define our place in history. Something that I think is really beneficial is is being able to experience different cultures, different countries, uh, uh, different time periods, to be able to understand where humans are coming from, the different views, the different perspectives that people have, and walking in their foot footsteps. Uh, to define our place in history may sound like a very selfish uh, goal or desire, but I think uh, one of the special things about you is you and your story. And um, yes, I think Steven Spielberg commented somewhere in some talk or interview somewhere about how his films were hopefully contributing to this uh, large tapestry of of cinema that uh, will you know um, contributes to the how do you say it the the history of mankind uh, uh, the story of mankind the story of history um, and you know each of us brings a, a different perspective we're all from different places different walks of life and your story counts as much as anybody else's stories and a lot of people will learn from your specific story so I think that's something special to share uh, how do we tell stories well I thought I'd kinda go over some of the different ways um, you know the the picture the single image the fine art the painting uh, there's a lot of information that that's been communicated through a single image uh, this one by Diego Velasquez is one of the most analyzed images in fine art. Uh, another uh, favorite piece of mine is uh, by Norman Rockwell, saving, saying grace. There's a lot of information being being uh, shared here in just a single image. Uh, 
so that's been a method of communicating with people that's been around since cavemen. Another is oral uh, histories and oral storytelling. Uh, isn't it interesting that across country, uh, cultures through all times and and uh, I think it's it's fascinating that there's always storytellers whether they're out on the street telling stories or or doing it through music or there's there's villages with a, a designated storyteller or or um, you know myth uh, folk tales and telling stories to help kids understand things. Uh, one of my favorite thing uh, moments. Uh, is from the movie Seven Samurai where they go and they they seek out the old wise man you know that's something that's pretty common um, here I'll, I'll show you a clip I thought that was a really great um, uh, scene from Seven Samurai, one of my favorite movies. Anyways, uh, another way is uh, telling stories uh, orally on the radio. Things that uh, the radio was very, very popular in its day, um, and there was a lot of visual stimulation that that occurred uh, through through that uh, medium. Um, Unfortunately, it's not. <laughs> it's hardly uh, around anymore. But I love that scene in Christmas Story with uh, little Ralphie, and he's so wrapped up with this uh, secret decoder um, stories and um, little orphan Annie. Anyways, another method is uh, the written word. Obviously, the written word has been around a long, long time, and there's been some powerful stories, and there still are. It's still a really big favorite um, route to. Uh, retrieve stories in our culture even today and theater theater still exists it's really strong uh, it's been around for a long long time with actors and music and uh, uh, live audiences and there's a great energy that I think is uh, unique to to that medium and uh, there's something to be said about that a lot of uh, movie stars uh, movie actors uh, go and they do theater and, and it's, it's a different energy it's real special but I think the the one that seems to uh, be the most popular uh, method of of hearing stories and finding stories and and um, consuming stories in our culture nowadays seem, is through film. Uh, the, the the great benefit of being able to have it, you know, everything perfectly in sync, ha be able to orchestrate the Im visuals. Uh, the music, uh, the lighting, the acting, the performances, even with special effects and different things, uh, we're able to step in the shoes of different cultures and different times and eras. Uh, you know, this is from the movie Mongo. We can actually be with a, a, a warrior, a captain, an army in a different country. It's something very powerful, I think. Um,
Ken Bruce also talked in this lecture about what it is uh, that we do as storytellers, and he said it comes down to entertainment. It's about entertainment, and to do the cliche thing, entertainment. What does it mean? Uh, it's to hold the attention of, to engage, to, to, uh, you know, this is something you guys have to ask yourselves all the time. Is this story engaging? Am I, am I going to bore people to death? Or, you know, I, <laughs> I did these really crude drawings really quickly, just to kind of show your audience. Are they engaged? Are they bored? Or are they confused? Which I think is the worst. I think confused is a, is a bad, bad thing. I had much I, I think people get a little irate if they're bored and uh not only bored but they're confused and they get a little frustrated. So something I really want you guys to to push yourselves to do is uh like I said, be introvertive, look into yourself, find your own story, uh find things in your own life and experience that you can draw from. I think this is the stuff that's gonna uh ring most true. Um and I'll give I'll give you a little assignment to help you do this, but finding story fuel in your own life, okay? Uh, writing journals is uh, you know this has been done for years and years. I think you, if you guys have any family or relatives, you should look into finding their journals and and reading things. It's a great source to find stories that are are worth telling. Most people write down in their journals the highlights of their lives, like I mentioned before. Um, anything special, the the people that they met, the um, you know, birthdays or things like that, special events in their lives. And it's 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 good stuff. You guys should keep a journal. Uh, a great story that came from a journal story. Uh, a journal. Uh, sketchbooks. This is has to be a regular for you guys, especially if you're just starting out drawing. If you've been drawing for a long time, obviously it's, it's a great uh, exercise to always do. But especially if you're still learning to draw, uh, storyboarding is all about a quick sketch, a very disposable sketch, being able to go through sketches really quickly. I'm going to try to do some exercises for you guys in a little bit here. Uh, I don't know if you guys have heard about this. This is right in the rain. You should look it up. It's a little pricey for what it is, but you guys should get a little notebook. Uh, this particular notebook is waterproof in the rain. I don't know. Whatever. Anyways. Uh, get a little notebook. You can get one for like 25 cents, 50 cents, uh, depending on where you're at, you know, just to keep in your pocket, a little pocket-sized notebook. These things are invaluable for just jotting down ideas. Um, a director at uh, DreamWorks, Tim Johnson, mentioned, don't get it right, get it written. You know, ideas are never die, they just go in the back pocket. So if you guys can just, uh, you know, keep a little notebook with you at all times. Uh, here's a a video interview with Larry David, the creator of Seinfeld and Curb Your Enthusiasm, really funny comedy writer. He uh, talks about his notebook here. One of the things that fascinates me about the show you do now is that you, you, you have many, many different, very offbeat ideas that you work into a show, and, and it intrigues me whether you go through life picking those ideas up and thinking about them as ways to turn them into comedy. You, there was a show you did, an episode you did early, I think, in Curb, where you, where you lost your notebook. You, right. you had a notebook. And I thought to myself, does Larry actually have a notebook like that? Here it is. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I got it. It's in my pocket. You got it. Mm -hmm. I got one. I know I have one. <laughs> Jeez, I hope I didn't lose it again. I'm not kidding. I don't have it. Maybe it's in the theater from huh? last night. But, uh, I probably forgot it. But but you do have something. Can anybody oh. figure out how to open these things? <laughs> <laughs> oh look, I did it. Yeah. Okay. But you have you, you keep something on you. I do, I do. I keep I keep a notebook on me. And and, and when you see something that sparks an idea. Yeah, I write it down. Mm -hmm. Right. And and you keep like a huge raft of these ideas then? Yeah, then I have a I have a bigger notebook. I have bigger notebooks that I transfer that idea that I wrote in the little notebook into the big notebook. Right. So then I have a big notebook filled with ideas. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so then now you're going to write a show, that, or do you right. go through it and say, oh, I can use this one idea or that idea? Or how do you start the process of a show? I really don't think this is any of your business. <laughs> <laughs> it's a trade secret, I guess. You're really asking me to give away my secrets. Oh, well, you're right. Another way that you guys can keep uh, researching is uh, 
clipping things out of newspapers or magazines, uh, anything you could find tangibly. Uh, I used to go to libraries a lot or community colleges and find the discarded magazines and cut out interesting pictures, whether it's a landscape or a person or um, you know, anything, uh, a drawing, just to kind of spark some ideas later on. And I can, uh, I don't know if you guys have ever heard, sometimes in, in uh, live action movies and things, they'll, they'll do kind of an inspiration notebook and uh, to kind of help you find the photography, the, the art direction that you want. You can kind of clip different things, different colors that kind of spark your, your thoughts. In any case, uh, I'll show you some of the stuff that I collected later, and and I use it, you know, on a fairly regular basis when I first started doing it. I I I picked out this picture. This is a receipts bike. Uh, it reminded me of this lecture that I went to at the L.A. Book Festival in at UCLA. I don't know. This was years ago, maybe like 1997 or so, where Michael Crichton spoke, and he went he spoke in this hall, and uh, I feel really lucky that I was able to, to see him before he passed away. He was the author of you know Jurassic Park, among other things, and he liked to cut out of the mag uh, newspapers, read, read the newspaper every morning. He cut out articles that were interesting to him. A lot of times they were scientific things or scientific di scientific discoveries or breakthroughs or whatever, and he would cut out the article and put it on these spikes. And he had several spikes around his his office and they would accumulate and at some point he would grab them and sort through them and remember why he had saved it and he'd be able to you know add richness and authenticity to what he wrote so it's a really smart man very very smart man I don't know how many PhDs he had you have to look it up so that's something you guys can do uh, someone mentioned to me the other day this site Pinterest I've never used it yet but it's kind of a digital uh, how do you say a uh, way of saving images and stories and things and and putting it up on a wall you know just kind of having it all in one place digitally that's a nice way to to find inspiration and keep yourself fed with stories so this is the big one I want to hit home keep a pocket sized notebook and keep a sketchbook if you guys can do these two things I think you're going to you're going to uh, be able to always have source material for yourself to be able to feed yourself with stories so now we're going to talk about quick sketch, gesture drawing, life drawing, uh, keeping a sketchbook. I want you guys, as one of your assignments, and I'll, I'll talk about this again, I want you guys to fill up a bunch of pages with sketches, some life drawings. Draw in cafes, wherever you can go. Uh, draw people. Draw animals. Draw cars. Draw motorcycles. I've taken up a uh, interest in motorcycles, and so I'm, I've been trying to learn how to draw what are the different parts you know I still don't know all the parts of a motorcycle but I've been trying to learn how to draw a motorcycle and now I'm, I don't know whatever it's uh, it's important you draw all kinds of things draw trees draw whatever you can I was drawing I draw on the train to work and and to home every day uh, as much as I can in order to just keep taking in the scenery taking in different composition exercises, whatever you can do, to kind of get faster at things as well. So in storyboarding, you know, dis uh, sketches are very done very quickly, they're very disposable. Um, things don't stay on screen very long. They make you do a lot of panels nowadays since everything's done digitally. Uh, I think there's a, wow that's not, that's a horrible tree any case I'll do it again whatever like I said disposable quick <laughs> something you guys are gonna need to do is get really fast um, you know time is of the essence the directors wanna see their uh, their proof of concept as quickly as possible so that they can decide whether to move forward and start cleaning it up tying it down put it in production or if they should just leave it on the cutting room floor so there is a great value in being able to draw very quickly and throw things away and not be attached to things. So when you're sketching and keeping a sketchbook, you're building up your mental library, you're building up an encyclopedia of imagery, uh, different different uh, types of people, different body types, 
uh, whatever you can get, different outfits, anything that you you learn and remember uh, will be for your own benefit. Uh, any types of interests that you have in life, I find the more interest, the things, if you have more interests in life, you are uh, much more diverse, and you can, mind you, if there's something that you don't know about, you can always research. You know, there's nothing wrong with that, right? And you know, gesture drawing. It's about finding single poses that summarize entire actions. Uh, Mark Andrews uh, up at Pixar, he, he mentioned, you know, how do you draw someone putting on a jacket with one pose? If you can do that, then you found yourself a good shorthand. So trying to find ways of summarizing an action into, into a single drawing is always a valuable thing. And that comes by practice and keeping a sketchbook and just learning trial and error. So I just wanted to give you my two cents. Something, that, uh, a, a few different thoughts I guess that, that I, I wanted to pass on. Uh, give yourself a starter line. I think something that is very difficult in the beginning is, is uh, trying to capture someone that's moving uh, before they've moved. You notice I'm doing a lot of profiles, uh, trying to get the silhouettes of things give yourself a starter line. You see how I'm kind of, I don't want to say carelessly, but my aim is pretty off in the in the first few strokes. But by the time I, I get there, I can refine it, you know. I can actually pick and decide a line. But I give myself a starter line. Just embrace that it's going to be rough and ugly, and you can always go back and tie it down, you know. You can always throw on another layer uh, when you're storyboarding to, to clean things up. Um, so give yourself a starter line. The other thing is, uh, you know, if you if you practice and, and give yourself a character that you can draw all the time, uh, mix and matching different heads and different bodies and different shapes. There's a lot of different head shapes, different types of people, different styles of hair. Um, you know, people come in all shapes and sizes. If you give yourself a good starting point, you'll always be able to reference kind of, okay, off of this, pull it out. He's got more of a big nose or a big chin and then I can just keep pulling and pushing and and finding ways to to find that that face you know so anyways the other one that I think is uh, one of my favorites someone mentioned this is the thickest darkest line wins so if I've got a guy here and uh, I decide no no he's he's kinda got more of a, a belly no no his arm oh he just moved alright well now his arm is up uh, now both arms are up and how do I get rid of that other arm well the thickest darkest line wins so now I have I have a different pose because the thickest darkest line wins the other stuff hopefully just falls by the wayside and you won't even notice it so just remember just keep adding lines obviously you always get another layer if you need to uh, other tips that people have passed uh, mentioned to me over the years is uh, using a pen, forcing the pen in the early stages. It'll give you confidence and thing, and things like that. It, it makes you be a little more decisive, a little more careful about your line. I think if you use a pencil, you're a little too careful. You get really. I think also the the other thing is when you're using a pencil, you get a lot of lights and darks and thicks and thins. With a pen, hopefully you just get one type of line, and you can focus on just getting in your sketch right because we don't want to be thinking about tone and value and getting caught up with all those things in your early stages mind you if you're already advanced obviously you can skip a lot of this stuff but I'm just giving you my two cents here uh, you'll gain confidence quicker when you're using a pen also uh, try to emphasize your uh, just learn observational sketching don't just copy everything. Don't be a slave to reality. Mind you, you do want to pick up things from reality. So you can be very meticulous at times, but make sure you try the the more pushed versions, you know. Um, uh, let's see. Go for one thing. Finding a single idea to, to try to capture with each drawing. I should be able to, you know, people should be able to look at your drawings and notice that you're, oh, you're getting how how skinny his legs are or the 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 candor of his of his walk and 
be able to to see what it is that you're trying to capture or how big his hat was who knows terrible sketches anyways disposable disposable you know some people take four or five sketchbooks before they start to reach a comfort level and so be patient with yourself you should try to fill up a sketchbook. I filled up a sketchbook once, uh, not once, but I mean, uh, one of the first sketchbooks I ever filled up with just life drawings was for my Cal Arts portfolio when I went to when I applied for college, and that was such a good experience to be able to fill up an entire sketchbook um, with sketches from life, drawing my friends, drawing their dogs, drawing people at at the zoo, at sporting events, um, you know, trying to. Uh, build up that library and you never know you find poses that I love baseball because the, the poses are so unique to baseball and they're so dynamic and they're so it's there's so many um, nice balance and, and different uh, uh, ways that people hold themselves and, and carry themselves and every player is a little different it's really fun to see the different ways that that people create balance and, and, and center of gravity in their bodies um, when they're playing sports, so that's a good a good one to to practice. And what's cool is in sports you have a lot of uniform uniforms which give yourself uh, points of reference to be able to draw the character. Whether it's a basketball player, or a football player. be able to find little mar uh little checkpoints around the body. You notice I'm doing really simplified hands and and feet. The the f the hands are as expressive as as your your body and face are. Mind you, you know, keep in mind that there's there's a lot of different ways you can communicate things. So memory exercises also help, you know, training your eye to be able to to see something quickly and then be able to record it because people don't hold still especially animals drive you crazy okay for this next part I just wanted to kinda go over some drawings with you that uh, I thought were pretty inspirational while you're doing your gesture drawings like I say good in good out you need to have good, a lot of good input to have a lot of good output so surround yourself with good artwork this is Al Hirschfeld uh, brilliant with a line master uh, you could see even with a tight line he still got the liveliness the activity the motion the expression the caricature the personality something that as an exercise we had done in improv was trying to understand how people enter a room and how 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 do they what part of their body leads you know you can see different points of this person same actor leading with different parts of his body it's really cool, interesting. Here's another one, Frank Reynolds. This one I, I Xeroxed out of an old library book uh, just to give myself a, uh, this reference forever. Really cool, expressive, unique silhouettes. Really pushed. You could see the expression, the acting, the emotion. Even this, this heavier set guy has a real lightness to his walk. He feels light even though he looks heavy. Glenn Keane is a master. This is one of the, the artists that I was exposed to very early on when I started studying animation and doing quick sketches. Look at how he's he's very good about indicating the ground plane. This is something Edgar Degas the, uh, would do in his pastel pieces, really plant the ballerina's feet, feet on the ground. Whenever you see the character interacting with something, it's good to draw those in, like this tree that she's sitting against. Without it, it looks kind of awkward like how does she keep her center of gravity she looks like she should be falling over this way even this animal you can see is broken down into nice simple shapes really attractive